like to welcome everybody to Hillcrest Baptist Church this morning. We're going to start off this morning's service with a baptism, so if you will, just bow your heads and we'll pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come into your house, Lord. We thank you for this child that is going through the waters of baptism this morning, Lord, that we as a church will help her to learn and to guide her in any way that she needs to be guided, Lord. We just pray that we would get behind her as a church and a church family, Lord, and help her. Lord, we just pray that the message that you've laid on Brother Jerry's heart this morning would be brought in a way that it would fall on receptive ears and hearts. And if there's some lost soul here today that needs to know you, Lord, that they would step out and come forward and ask you into their life. And it's all these things that we ask and pray in your sweet and precious holy name. Amen. Am I on? Yeah. Jackie is what I like to call a success story at Hillcrest Baptist Church. We have had her since she was um, just a very, very small girl, and she's been in Sunday school and mission friends and every activity, activity, activity we've had at church all of her life. And then she came home a couple weeks ago and said, I want Jesus in my heart. And at home she invited the Lord in her heart and so she wants to be baptized, and she is really excited about this. So um, we're very grateful for you guys for teaching, for being patient with our kids and taking care of them. You know, we have never lost a, a child yet. <laughs> Amen to that. Uh, we, we have them, and we keep them, so thank you for that. Jackie, come on down here. This is Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, do you love Jesus Christ? Have you got him in your heart? Good deal. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> and all God's people said, and if you would please stand we will continue on with number 426 victory in jesus Thank you. 
streets of gold, beyond the crystal sea, above the angels singing, and the old redemption story, and some sweet day I'll sing of their the song. song already we just lift up your name today to praise and glorify you we ask father that you be with the tithes and offerings given today that you'd bless it that it be used to carry forward your word uh, to spread the knowledge of jesus christ we pray for brother jerry this morning lord as you give him the word you'd have us to hear that we'd apply it to our lives we thank you father for salvation through jesus through his resurrection and uh they send it to the right hand of the father and we see him soon uh coming in the near future father we pray in jesus name amen Well, good morning again. Steve's out of town, so I guess I'll do the announcements. You know, I love doing these things. <laughs> if you would look on your back page, ladies, there's a brunch Saturday the 13th. So it's on the back page of your bulletin. And Fuge is uh, coming up, so we need to have our deposits in by next week. So please pay, pay attention to that. And Ginger has instructed and she is a general. Did you know that? When general says something, you do it. She said we are to get our pictures made, and this is the last day to make them, so. <laughs> she is putting together a pretty good pictorial. And then VBS workers, May the 15th. We're gonna welcome everybody, and we sure are glad you're here. Um, we're just so fortunate that God has blessed our church with people that care, 
we have visitors that come and they stay with us and uh, we're very grateful about that but most of all we know that Christ Jesus is here in this building right now he's with us and we praise him for that so the way we do this we ask that everybody stand and shake hands or hug necks or do whatever it takes to welcome somebody so everybody stand and make somebody feel welcomed of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join us with Jesus as we travel this art. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part as we travel this art for a part of the family the family of God all right you can be seated I know What a day the Lord has made. Brian, how many scriptures did y'all pass out as Gideons this weekend? 12,000, over 12,700 scriptures in hotels. Yeah. Our church has, I'm not sure how many Gideons we have, probably seven or eight. And um, we were the main church in our side of town so we need to do some praying for them because there's other churches that need to be involved in the Gideons as well and it just takes a love for the Lord really and a, a little commitment to do and they do a lot so be praying if somebody here is qualified to be a, a Gideon come talk to me and I'll recommend you and we'll see where that goes let's pray together Father Almighty what an awesome God you are I'm so very grateful, Lord, that you took each of us before we were saved and you loved us. You sent somebody to share the gospel with us. And it may have taken several times for somebody to lead us to you. And sooner or later, Father, there are so many victories in this church. So many people invited you into their life. And for that, I'm very grateful, Lord. I'm one of them. I do thank you, Father, for the children that come to get saved and the youth and adults and senior adults. And Father, I pray that we would never turn away somebody that was seeking the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for our church. I pray for the future. I pray, God, for opportunities to serve you. I pray for the mission opportunity, Father, we have to send supplies to uh, New Orleans. I pray, God, that you would bless that mission effort. And God, that you would open other doors for ministry. I do pray, Father, for those that are hurting health-wise. Some are hurting financially. Some are looking for jobs. I pray, God, that you'd meet their needs, take care of them. I pray, God, that you would encourage us today that we'd hear the word of God proclaimed. And, and as the word of God goes out, Father, it would pierce our hearts. And God, that we would... Uh, commit ourselves to doing what the Word of God tells us to do. We do love you, Lord, and we praise you, and we're here today to worship you, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, children, come on down, children.
Okay. I have something that's really been on my heart lately, and I'm going to kind of use it today in my sermon. It's the very first uh, verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you know that God created everything on this earth? In, when it's light outside, whether it's cloudy or not, He created the light. He created the darkness. Um, there was no waters, no oceans, no rivers. He created all the waters, the heavens, the stars, the moons. He created everything. And He created the things that we eat, the fruit of trees, uh, the animals, the fish. He created everything that we have. You know that somehow or another he was involved in creating the very clothes that you have on? God has created everything and he's given that creation to us. He has created his word for us. You know, in the old time, when this was written, they didn't have a written Bible. They shared the Bible verbally with their mouth. They shared it with each other. But then God allowed people to write it down and that's what we have here. Today I'm going to be talking in my sermon about God created everything for us to take care of. And as we take care of it, we're pleasing God. But if we don't take care of it, then we're not so pleasing. And one thing he is going to tell us today is in everything that we have. Now listen to this. Look at me. Look at me. Everything that we have, we ought to praise God and thank God for. Uh, see these shoes I have on? Every time I put those on, I thank God for them. There was a time when I didn't have any dress shoes. Couldn't really afford dress shoes. And then when I started preaching, guess what a preacher has to have? Dress shoes. So I bought a used pair of shoes and polished them and put them on. And ever since then, I've been very appreciative to God for shoes. I didn't have a suit to preach with. So guess what I did? I went to the Goodwill store and bought a suit for $5. And I preached my first sermon in that $5 suit. And I'm very grateful to God that he lets me wear shirt, uh, clothes like this now. I have glasses on. See my glasses? Donna, you have glasses too. Without our glasses, we can't see, can we? So I thank the Lord. When I put my glasses on, yes, I know it. You ought to be thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Be thankful. And praise God. Now wait, I've got one more thing to tell you before I give you this. And actually, this is from God too. When we realize that God has given us something, we need to tell people with our mouth, God gave me this. Thank you, Lord. And let people hear you say thank you, Lord. You know, when you go to school, you know how rough it can be at school sometimes? That's when you really need to tell people about the Lord what God has done for you. Well, I look in this bag and I say, thank you, Lord. Do you? Do you? Yes, 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 okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And you may remain seated as we continue on with number 227, Praise Him, Praise Him, 227. Suffered and glad and 
stand as we continue on with number 54, Great is Thy Faithfulness, 5-4.
He is the conquering <clears throat> Savior and the Comforter. He is the great I Am and the sacrificial Lamb. He is the reigning King of Kings, but also a gentle shepherd. The same hands that measured the waters were nailed to a cross. And with his hands, he leads and calms and protects his dear children.
they were singing and I was thinking, you know, we're all going to pass away from this earth. You know that, don't you? It's appointed for everybody to die once. When they pass away, they're going to be in that big choir up in heaven. They are so faithful to sing and it, they bless us, but don't you know they bless the Lord Jesus Christ as they sing like they do. And we have so much talent. I praise God for that. We're going to be in First Chronicles chapter 29 today. And the um, title of this message is David's Prayer of Praise. So First Chronicles 29, and we're going to zero in on verses 10 through 16, but I think I'm going to read 10 through 20. First Chronicles 29, starting in verse 10. As I read these verses, I want you to picture David as he's in front of the assembly, and I don't know how many people were in front of that David. I don't know what the assembly, the numbers were, but I do know this. <clears throat> it was a lot of people. And he gets up in front of those people and starts praying, verbally praying out loud, and you hear things in his voice and I'm going to share those things in a minute, but it's things like adoring God, so grateful to be able to, to show his love of God in front of the people. So as I read these verses, think about the times we have, the opportunities we have to share the Lord Jesus Christ in words, in praises. Sometimes all it takes is a, is a, is a good word, a pleasant word to make somebody's day. So First Chronicles 29, starting in verse 10, and Therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all, all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. And in your hand is power and might. In your hand is to make great and to give strength to all. Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as were our fathers. Our days on earth are a shadow, and without hope, our Lord God, all the abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand, and is all your own. And then verses 17 through 20. I know also, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness, as for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now with joy, I have seen your people who are present here to offer willingly to you. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the intent of the thoughts of your heart, of your people, and fix their heart towards you. And give my son Solomon a loyal heart to keep your commandments and your testimonies and your statutes. Do all these things and to build the temple for which I have made provision. Then David said to all the assembly, Now bless the Lord your God. So all the assembly blessed the Lord God of their fathers and bowed their heads and prostrated themselves before the Lord and the king. Can you just picture what's taken place? It requires reading this several times to take it all in. But I think, and I did read this, but... My personal thought is this is one of the greatest prayers of praises in the Bible. Somebody wrote this, No text in the Bible more magnificently declares God's sovereign's power. There is no one like the Lord, the Almighty One, whose glory fills the universe. He not only fills this place, but He fills every place on this earth. That's how large our God is. David shares the thought that everything exists from God and God gives his creation to us. 
there's some uh, thoughts that I'm going to share with you about him giving these creations to us. But David teaches us that God is the giver of all creation. And out of his own hand, he gives them to us. Now, as he gives his creation to us, we become stewards. We have a responsibility to keep God's creation. Now, I want you to shake your head if you heard me. We are stewards of God's creation. And he has blessed us all with his creation called the earth and all the resources in the earth and everything in it he created. So we're going to talk about that today and, and picture what David's going through in his mind. You know, David was the one that wanted to build the temple and God said, no, you've shed too much blood. Your son Solomon will um, build my temple. At that moment, David determined that he was going to start putting gold and silver and bronze and, and lumber and all the, the things that this new temple was going to require. David started acquiring the resources to build it. He paid for a lot of it out of his riches. And he makes the point that God gave him everything that he has so that he can give back to God. Did that come out right? That ought to be an amen there. Um, God gave, gives us everything so that we can give him things back. This is a, something really, it's close to my heart. And it needs to be said that everything that we have is from God. You're not sitting in a pew that man paid for. God paid for those pews. You're not wearing clothes that you made. God made those clothes. Everything that we have is from God, and, and we are stewards of it. What would have happened if David would have had the attitude that he wanted to build the temple, but God said no, so he goes, you know what that is, that pouting. So he got back in a corner and just pouted, maybe said something like this, I'm not having anything to do with it because I wanted to do it and I can't do it. Now we do that sometimes, we're guilty of that, but yet he had a great attitude. But what, had, what would have happened had he said, well, I'm not giving anything to it, I'll, I'll participate in worshiping, but I'm not gonna give a penny to that, that temple because I wanted to build it. I wanted to have my way. What would have happened to David had he said or had that kind of attitude? Well, just in a little bit, David's gonna meet his maker face to face and what a glorious meeting that's going to be when David meets God face to face because David had the attitude that God gave him everything and he's given God everything he can back to God. He has no worries about meeting God. He's asked forgiveness for his sins and he knows that God's forgiven him. He's done everything he can to get right with God, including giving a big part of his fortune. So let's look at David's heart today as he praises God. We're going to start with verses 10 through 13. So let's read that again and listen to David as he describes how awesome God is. Starting in verse 10, 1 Chronicles 29, verse 10. Therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly, and David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. You just don't get much clearer than that. The very first thing David did was praise God and bless the Lord before the people. He blessed the Lord with his mouth. He shared before the people, and I don't know how many, again, how many people were there, but it's awful hard to get up here in front of people. I never wanted to pastor a big church. I'm scared to death of you guys. <laughs> it's, it's hard to get up here. If you've ever been up here, from time to time, 
you know how hard it is. Your knees start shaking before you get comfortable. And, and David's before this assembly, and there's probably thousands and thousands of people, yet he gets up in front of those people and blesses God and shows them how to praise God. He is not ashamed of his God. He's not ashamed to tell them that he loves his God and how awesome his God is. He adores God in front of the assembly of people. A lesson for us is to love God in front of people, no matter where we're at, work, play, shopping. Praise God with our lips. We were talking today about preaching and sharing the Word of God. And let me tell you, the number one thing that God is looking for from a man to preach His Word is humility. A man cannot get up here and preach, I did this and I, I, I. And we hear that sometimes from the pulpit. And if you ever hear that from me, you can call me down because I know who I am and I know who God is. I know He has provided everything. We praise God for what He did, for what He is going to do. But I want you to hear this. We praise God with our mouth, with our lips, out loud. Run over to Matthew uh, chapter 10. This was a point that God gave me while we were on vacation. I took my sermons with me and I was not going to include this, but God said to, so I'm going to. Matthew 10, verses 32 and 33. The Bible says, this is Jesus speaking. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. That's a really good verse. But listen to 33. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So if you, according to this verse in 32, if you confess before men, you use your mouth. You use words. You're not ashamed to speak about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's writing this in red letters so that you and I can hear that we are to use our mouth to praise God to people. But if we don't, then he's not going to, he says this, he's not going to confess our names before God the Father. And that's a huge, huge direction from God use our mouth to share the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, keep on going in, in verse 10. And David writes, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, Father forever and ever. David says this in front of the whole assembly. Father God, what an awesome God you are. That would be what I would say. Father God. I don't know about you, but it blesses my heart to hear our older people use the word Father to God. It blesses my heart to, to the young ones as well. But if you're 70, 80, on up, and I hear you praying out loud and you start out Father, I guarantee you, you've just broken my heart. Dealing with Almighty God and you have a relationship with him where you call him Father. David gets up in front of this whole assembly, Father God, Almighty God. What a blessing it is to hear us. And I'm telling you this too. This morning, our deacons prayed. We always pray up here before you guys get here. And we address God as Father. And I've never told the deacons this, but you guys bless my heart every single Sunday morning when you say, Father, Father God, and then we go into our petitions. He's our Father. Keep on reading in verse 12, and David begins to describe God's greatness. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. Your hand is power, and might in your hand is it to make great and to give strength to all. David doesn't leave any doubt that everything that we have, everything that he has, God gave him. In front of this whole, I'm going to keep saying this, in front of the whole assembly, he's telling them everything your king has, God gave me. God has created everything, and everything belongs to God, 
yet he gives it to us. In other words, everything that you have, God has created and given to you. God has power to do anything, and every time I look at the stars, you know, I get up early and I walk early. And sometimes the stars are just, I couldn't count them if I had to. And I look for certain constellations. And I, here lately I've seen the Big Dipper. And I just want to bow down before God when I see that Big Dipper. I looked for it for years and couldn't see it. And all of a sudden there it was. It's always been up there. I just couldn't see it. I'm now looking for the Little Dipper. And it's hard to see. I'll research it. And one of these days I'm going to see it. But God created every single star, moon, sun, and everything up there. And when you see those millions and millions of stars, God created them. And the Bible tells us that he named them. That's an awesome God. And it ought to be a time of praise to God if you're fortunate enough to get up and see the stars or you see them at nighttime. Realize God created those stars. Our God, our Father, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that creation of those stars. And if you've ever seen a clear sky and all those stars sh just shining, you can't help but to realize God created those. There wasn't two big gold things plowing into each other, and all of a sudden you got stars, Big Bang Theory. God created them. We praise God for that. David says that in heaven and earth, those both belong to God. Yet he has allowed us being on this earth to take care. We've been made with strength and given strength. I'm going to share a thought with you that uh, it probably didn't apply then, but it applies now. Back in the I don't know if I want to tell you when it was when we did this. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Back in the 50s. I wasn't around. That's what my parents told me. Back in the, and all you're going to laugh, but you're guilty of this too. In the 50s and 60s, if you were fortunate enough to go to McDonald's and get a bag of burgers and, and you be in the car, and most likely you didn't have air conditioning, so that thing there, that was an opener of the window. Remember that in cars? So you're driving down the road and you're eating those burgers and those fries and McDonald's came out with those fries. Remember that back in the 50s when you'd ever had French fries like that? Who a man were they? And you had a drink too. And you got done and back then I was skinny. And one of those little burgers filled me up. So satisfied and what'd you do with your trash? And what you do with the bag? Oh, no, you didn't either. You threw it out the window like the rest of us. Oh, yes, you did too. Every one of you are guilty at one time or another throwing that trash out if you were in the 50s and 60s. Uh, well, that was a problem. If you went down the road back then, you saw trash on the side of the road. You saw McDonald's bags. You saw all kinds of trash. Nobody cared about it. Well, that was God's creation back then, just as it is now. And we realized back in the 70s that we had a problem. And on television, there was this thing called Tennessee Trash. A man was dressed up. He was old clothes and greasy looking, had an old clunky car. He was throwing trash out the window, both windows. And going down. You remember this, or am I the only one to remember? Or shake head if you're with me. It was a public uh, commercial for us to straighten up. Quit throwing that litter out. That's one thing that we did not care about taking care of God's creation back then. And somebody realized that that was a problem and it needed to be taken care of. And whoever it was came up with Tennessee Trash Commercial. I thank the Lord for those people because they put it on our hearts not to throw that trash out in God's creation. Take care of it. We have a responsibility. We are stewards of God's creation. Shake your head if you're... If you agree with me, I don't care if you agree or not, you are a steward of God's uh, creation. All right, I'm going to hurt some of you now. We have problems today. 
Some of you believe in global warming and some of you don't. But I, I do know this and you do too. Something is happening to our environment. Whether it's global warming, I'm not going to argue with you about that. All I know is we're having more hurricanes, we're having more earthquakes, we're having more. The sea is, a, I think it's a degree and a half warmer now, which is causing all the hurricanes, they say. But if we have a problem, if you agree with me that we have a problem, don't you think we ought to try to take care of it? But we're not. We're not doing much, we're arguing about it. Republicans, Democrats, they each at each other's throat about this. But there's something to our weather. It's getting worse and worse. And there's just so many resources on this earth to take care of God's created people. What's going to happen if we run out of water 10 years from now? And you have a preacher telling you today that we ought to take care of our water. We ought to do something to, to I don't know what the answer is, but if we have a problem, we ought to take care of it. God has made us stewards of his creation. Well, I'll stop. We're going to keep on going and look at verse 13. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. David uses the word we. We thank you and we praise you. We together praise you, God. We praise your glorious name. Can you just picture God in front of this whole assembly praising God, but not by himself. He's leading the people to praise God together. If you want to see God really bless his churches, really bless Hillcrest Baptist Church, then we ought to verbally bless God and praise God. Shake your head. Now, we ought to. Do we? I'll leave that up to you. But if you really want to see God bless his church, which we are his church, we ought to be in the business of using our mouth to praise God for the resources that he gives our church. Every business meeting, I thank the Lord for our financial statement. Not every preacher can do that. We, in the last several years, God has run through our church millions of dollars. A church our size cannot usually say that. We still have, after building that, we still have 200 and some odd thousand dollars in the checking account. And we paid that down to under a million dollars. God's good to us. But all that came from God. Amen. And we ought to be thankful and praising God with our mouth. Thank you, Lord, in front of everybody. Thank you, God. Thank you. All of us ought to acknowledge everything we have comes from God. And be satisfied taking care of God's creation. Not easy. Uh, our gasoline cars are polluting. What are we going to do about that? You know, they ought to be working on something that doesn't pollute. I wish Ford would call me. I'd tell him what I know. <laughs> Which is, I feel sorry for you guys driving Dodges, <laughs> Dodge trucks. Uh, never mind. God has given us everything that we have. Doesn't the Bible say something like this? Look at those thousands of hills out there, and there's cows on them. They belong to me. All the cows on a thousand hills belong to God. Remember that next time you're eating a hamburger. He provided that meat for us. We ought to be taking care of it. I want to close, kind of wind this down with verses 14 through 16. David says, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you, God, and all your own uh, we have given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as were all our fathers. Our days on earth are in shadow and without hope. O oh Lord our God, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand, and all is your own. As we built the Family Life Center, 
I was privy to what was taking place every single day. And some of the little doodads that go on copper, or not, it's PVC pipe now, the little fittings, the plumbing fittings, the plumber would come up to me and hold up a little brass fitting and say, this used to cost me 98 cents, and it was $12 now, just for one little fitting. And he'd start mouthing off, and carrying on. I said, wait just a minute. God has provided this church to pay that $12. Everything over there was way above what it should have cost. And every day I had the privilege of, of witnessing to all those guys over there complaining about it, that God paid what we have paid down on that. He gave us everything, and they were worried to death. I said, there's no worries here. God gave us this, and he's going to take care of it. Praise the Lord for that. Maybe you're going through something financially hard. Well, God's there with you. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. He's always faithful. He'll provide for us. He'll take care of our needs. What we cannot do is look at others and say, well, they're not praising God. They're not using their mouth to praise God. What we have to do is take care of us. We have to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Everybody else is God's responsibility. So when it comes to using our mouth to praise God, don't look at others and say they're not doing it. Look at self and make sure that we're doing it. I've got seven applications I want to share with you. Number one, God gives wisdom and talent to us. Whatever you have is from God, your talent, your wisdom. He didn't make everybody geniuses, but whatever you have, he gave to you, so use it as he gave. Number two, God gives events and experiences for us to grow. He allows us to have these experiences, trials, James would call them, so that we would draw closer to the Lord. And as we draw closer to the Lord, we thank him. It's hard to thank the Lord for a trial, isn't it? But once we get through with it, we realize God took care of it for us. So we praise him and we thank him. Number three, God gives materials and finances. Now we are proving that right now. God will take care of his people that give back to him what he's given. Number four, God gives opportunities to use our talents. I was thinking when the choir was singing, we have about seven or eight extra chairs up there. I was going to get up here right at the very beginning and ask you if you like to sing. I wouldn't do that to you. You'd volunteer you like that. But do you like to sing? Raise your hand if you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know there's seven or eight in here that would love to sing and be up in our choir with us. God has given you a talent to sing. Some of you not so, so don't get up there and raise your hand. Number five, God gives us opportunities to apply whatever he's given us. What wisdom, what talent you have. God will give you an opportunity to use it. Number six, God assigns different tasks to different people. And if God has assigned it, it is a perfect task. Somebody may be doing something that you think is more important than yours, but if God has given you to do something, just do it. That's what God has asked us to do. Number seven, last one, God created and owns everything yet he has given you what you have. You may be the richest person in here, the poorest person. Whatever it is, God has given to you. He doesn't look at things like a human does. He's given you exactly what you need. Well, most of you are still awake. I'm proud of you. What I'm looking at is God's creation. He's created some really fine people, some good people. And I thank you for what God has given you and what you're doing for the Lord. We're going to give an invitation. And one of the things in the invitation that you could do is if you know that you have something that God has given you and you're not using it, 
during this invitation, why don't you ask God, Lord, give me opportunities and help me to be faithful to do what you've asked me to do. If you need to make a decision for Jesus about salvation, you've never invited Jesus into your heart, the Bible says, call on my name, call on Jesus' name, and you will be saved. So simple. Repent and, and, and call on Jesus' name. Somebody asked me how you join our church. Well, number one, you ask Jesus into your heart. Number two, you come forward during the invitation, and if you've never invited Jesus into your heart, we'll go over that. And the second part of that is you'd be baptized, just like Jackie did this morning. It's real easy. The hard part is stepping out into the aisle, the first step. So if you need to join our church, you join by baptism. If you've been baptized at another church, Baptist church, a, a Bible-believing baptism, then come forward and we'll move you by your statement. We'll move you by your letter. It's easy to join Hillcrest Baptist Church. You ask Jesus in your heart. You become baptized and you become a member. So let's pray. And if God puts something on your heart, come on down and let's pray about it in front. Father Almighty, this is your time to, to speak to us. Your time, Father, to speak to our hearts. And I pray for each one, Lord, that you, you search each heart out in the applications, Lord, today. If we're not doing them, I pray that we'll have a, a serious talk with you and their lives. I pray, God, if there's anybody that needs to join our church, I pray, God, that they would come forward. If anybody needs to be baptized, let them come forward. This is your time to speak to us, and I pray, God, that we'd listen. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is an invitation. I will be up front inviting you to come forward and talk to me, and we'll pray after that. me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me throne of mercy find a sweet relief kneeling there in deep contrition help my unbelief Savior Savior Spirit, save me by thy grace. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass. Me by Lord, the spring of all my comfort, more than life.
life to me. Whom have I on earth beside thee? Whom in heaven but thee? Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Thank you.